All right, guys, so we're in the kitchen today and we're gonna take the shank from a white-tailed deer. And this is one of the most unlikely gristle-ridden hunks of tendon and bone on the whole animal. And we're gonna turn this thing into one of the most savory and tender dishes on the planet. So let's get started. All right, so this is the front shank off of a white-tailed deer. They're about eight inches long or so. This was a fairly big doe. Now you could take this whole thing, I'm gonna put it into a cast iron dutch. They'll fit into a 10 inch dutch just fine. I like to break the bone or cut the bone. And the reason I like to do that is because it allows all that marrow inside to come out and that is really good stuff. So I start by cutting the meat and then I'm gonna saw the, uh, saw the bone and you saw it just a little bit and you can break it in half. Once we've got that done, we're gonna go ahead and season this thing up and then we're gonna brown it before we put it into an oven at about 300 degrees for about four hours. If you've got shanks from a young deer, you can get away with less cooking time, but this was a fairly good sized dough and uh, so we're gonna cook it low and slow for quite a while. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just throw a little salt and pepper on there. This is pretty coarse salt. You don't have to go with the coarse stuff. It's just what I had. All right, so I've got some bacon ends here. Bacon makes everything better, come on. I'm just gonna dice these up or you know, slice them up, cube them up, whatever, pretty small. So we're gonna throw this in our skillet that we're gonna brown the, uh, brown the shanks in. We're gonna use this pork fat to uh, brown those shanks. That's gonna be awesome. You don't have to do this. Uh, you could just use olive oil, but there's just something about bacon. Mm. Cast iron gets a bad rap. I don't understand it. People like to use those Teflon nonstick things. They get all scratched up and who the hell knows what Teflon does to you? But cast iron, if you use it right, is as non-stick as anything. Anyway, I'm gonna throw this right on stove top. Oh, wrong one. Get that sizzling. So we're gonna cook that bacon down, get all that pork fat in there, and then we're gonna take that bacon out, put it aside, we'll use that later, and then we're gonna use that pork fat. We're gonna put our shanks right in there and we're gonna brown them on uh, three sides. So, th so these shanks are gonna have one side where the bone is exposed. And so those, that side you don't need to brown, uh, but brown all the other sides. All right, so while that's, uh, while that's cooking down, we need to dice up an onion. So this bacon is about, about done. I'm gonna grab a plate and a... All right, time to put the shanks in. So bone side, we don't wanna, we don't wanna brown that side, just leave that alone. You don't want your heat too high. Kind of just medium heat will work just fine.
All right, that'll work. Just put those, take those out, put them right beside your bacon. All right, <clears throat> now just take your, uh, take your onions and throw right in that same pot. Scrape up all those good bits of bacon and deer meat that's stuck to the bottom. These onions will kind of help to deglaze the pan a little. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and preheat the oven to 300 degrees. Hmm. Oh, there they are. All right. All right. <clears throat> so the, the oven's heating up, the onions are browning, and we've got our, uh, got our bacon cooked, but got our shanks browned. Um, when these onions start to turn translucent, I'm going to put some garlic in there. I am having to use the canned or the jarred garlic. Sorry, I don't have any good fresh cloves. It'll be okay. Uh, once we get the, uh, the garlic in there, we're gonna put two or three cups of red wine in there, throw a couple of pepperoncinis in it, and then we're gonna put all of this stuff right back in. We're gonna cover it up with our lid, and we're gonna throw it in our oven, 300 degrees for four hours. Now, probably two hours or so before this thing is done, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw some carrots, some celery. You can put a, pretty much put whatever you want in there with it. Uh, depending on what you're going to do with it. But uh, as long as you cook it low and slow with a little bit of uh, liquid in there, this thing is going to turn out amazing. It kind of like makes its own gravy in there. It's pretty sweet. All right, so these onions are starting to get translucent. I'm going to put my garlic in there. The garlic, <clears throat> you need to, garlic doesn't have a whole lot of moisture in there. So if you put it in early, like if you're sauteing something like this, if you put it in early in the process, it'll burn really easily. So I tend to try to put it in right before I put uh, the rest of my liquid in so that it, uh, it doesn't burn. Lots of garlic. Hey, you gotta test it out, come on. Oh my, this is going to be fabulous. I like to throw a couple of pepperoncinis in there and we'll throw a little juice too. I love pepperoncinis. So now we're gonna just put our shanks right in there, bone side up. These lower ends, it doesn't really matter. There's not really a bone side up. Throw the bacon in. for two or three. That will put a little more wine in there. What the heck? All right. Into the oven it goes. All right. So I set it for three hours, 300 degrees. 
Um, after three hours, I'm gonna throw my vegetables in there and then cook it for another hour. That's gonna be terrible right there. I'm gonna take these uh, bay leaves out of there. All right, so this uh, these shanks are pretty much done, but um, I'm gonna let them cook for a little bit longer. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my, my celery and my carrots in there. I gotta try a little piece of this. That's terrible. You shouldn't just don't just forget this. Forget this recipe. You wouldn't like it. All right. Back in the oven. Another forty-five minutes, hour, something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and cook some mashed potatoes to go along with this. The secret to great mashed potatoes is lots of butter and some half and half. So basically fat and more fat. And if you got some bacon grease, you might throw that in there too. That'll work. You wanna come fix your plate? Mom. Go, where's your brother at? Koi, hey, dinner's ready. Dinner's ready. I didn't find my bike. You didn't find your bike. Your bike's on the other side of the garden. Dinner's ready? Yeah. What's it in the shape of? A half of a chicken foot. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. All right, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and that way you'll get updated when we upload new videos. Uh, we're going to be doing more wild game cooking here in the near future. So with that, we'll see you next time.